Hi friends, in this video we are studying machine design subject design for static loading chapter objective questions and answers. So let's start. A circular shaft required to carry a maximum load of 200 kilo Newton. What is the diameter of shaft if permissible tensile, tensile stress is not exceed 190 megapascal so they had given permissible tensile stress 190 megapascal that is 190 newton per millimeter square and then maximum load of 200 kilo Newton. So that becomes 200 into 10 raised to 3 Newtons. So as they are giving that it is a circular shaft. Therefore cross section area A is equal to 5 by 4 D square. And we need to find the D value. And we know already stress equal to force upon area so that we can write as force equal to rho maximum that is permissible tensile stress into area so once we put the given values we will find it for d and the d value is 36.61 millimeter a cast iron link as shown in figure is required to transit a steady tensile load of 25 kilo Newton. What is the maximum tensile stress induced? So they had given a cast iron link which is required to transit 25 kilo Newton of force and they are asking to find the what is the maximum tensile stress induced? So here for section BB we have this diagram which says that the outer diameter from this to this point is 80 mm and the inner circle diameter is 50 mm and its width is 20 mm. So we know there are two types of cross section areas. So one is a rectangular cross section area and another one is hollow cross section area. Therefore solid cross section area that is 55 into 30. And then hollow cross section area. So once we find the rectangular cross section area 55 into 30 it will be 1650 mm square. And to find the hollow cross section area we are doing with 5 by 4 larger diameter square minus smaller diameter square. So we know the value 80 and 50. So that will become 3063.5 mm square and we know stress is equal to force upon area so for solid force is 25 into 10 raised to 3 that is 25 kilo Newton divided by we have area already 1650 mm square so it will be 15.15 Newton per mm square coming to hollow force upon area we know force is 25 into 10 raised to 3 and the area is 3063.5 mm square and the value is 8.16 newton per millimeter square so the question is what is the maximum tensile stress induced so from these two answers we can conclude that Maximum tensile stress induced is 
15.15 न्यूटन पर मिलीमीटर स्क्वायर वॉट इज द फोर्स रिक्वायर्ड टू पंच सर्क्यूलर होल ऑफ सिक्सटी एम एम डायमीटर इन फाइव एम एम थिक प्लेट द अल्टीमेट सी एस टेस ऑफ द प्लेट इज फिफ्टी फाइव न्यूटन पर मिलीमीटर स्क्वायर सो दे आर टेलिंग वी हैव अ प्लेट of 5 mm thick because thickness is given thickness is 5 mm and we want to punch a hole of 60 mm diameter and the ultimate shear stress of the plate is 50 pi newton per millimeter square because that is it is a punching operation the shear stress going to involved in this so we need to find force required to punch the hole so the given our ultimate shear stress of the plate is 50 pi newton per millimeter square so at 50 pi newton per millimeter square the material deformation starts or breakage starts and thickness of the plate is 5 mm then hole diameter is 60 mm so by whole diameter we can calculate the circumference that is pi d into thickness so that is cross section area circumferential cross section area pi d into t that will become pi into 50 into 5 that is 785.5 mm square so we know shear stress equal to force upon area and the shear stress ultimate shear stress is given that is 55 area we have found already so force is this much that is 43.202 kilo newton ninety kilo newton force is transmitted through a pin as shown in figure If the maximum permissible tensile stress of the bar is 120 newton per millimeter square, and permissible shear stress of the pin is 88 newton per millimeter square, what is the diameter of pin? So they are telling to find the diameter of pin. So we have four supplied 90 kilo newton. That is 90 into 10 raised to 3 newtons, and permissible tensile stress of the bar, that is maximum stress, that much is permitted. So permissible tensile stress of the bar is 120 newton per millimeter square, and permissible shear stress of the pin. This is for bar, and shear stress is for pin. That is. 88 newton per millimeter square and resisting area there are two areas of the pin which resisting the force applied that you can see here in the diagram so when we apply the force there are two areas of the pin which are resisting the applied force so therefore resisting area will become 2 into pi by 4 dp square that is diameter of pin square so that will be 1.57 dp square so permissible shear stress tau is equal to force upon resisting area because shear stress equal to force upon area area is 1.57 dp square so we are putting the values and then we can calculate that dp is 25.52 mm so as per the given options 26 mm is the correct answer because 25.52 is nothing but 26 mm therefore option b is correct option a steel rod of 25 mm diameter 
70 mm length subjected to tensile load following observation were found final length is 95 mm final diameter 15 mm yield load 4 newton ultimate load 6.5 kN based on the above tensile test match the following so they are telling that a steel rod of 25 mm diameter and 70 mm length is subjected to tensile load of so tensile load they are subjecting it to tensile load f and they are observed the following observations the final length of the rod is 95 after the application of load it will become 95 mm so initially it was 70 mm and then final diameter is 15 mm and initially it was 25 mm and yield load is 4 kilo newton so they are applying 4 kilo newton of load to form the deformation and the ultimate load is 6.5 kilo newton so from 4 newton to 6.5 kilo newton ultimate load is applied so we have to match this list 1 and list 2 based upon the calculations what we obtain so original cross section area that means when the cross section is 25 mm we know cross section is 5 by 4 d square as the rod is circular in shape so 5 by 4 d square that we get 490.62 millimeter square final cross section and the cross section changes from 25 to 15 so that cross section is 176.625 mm square we know yield stress equal to yield load upon original cross section area of the steel rod and ultimate tensile stress equal to ultimate load upon original cross section area of the steel rod the main thing we have to observe that we are not changing here with the final cross section area because in calculating engineering stress and strain we are always applying original cross section area you can see in the yield stress as well as ultimate stress so we get the yield stress value as 8.15 newton per millimeter square that is 8.15 megapascal and ultimate tensile stress as 13.24 newton per millimeter square or 13.24 megapascal i repeat once again while calculating yield stress we are applying original cross section area and also for ultimate load so the ultimate tensile stress we are using original cross section area but we are not using final cross section area to find the yield stress or ultimate stress because in engineering stress strain the calculations are carried only by the original cross section area so we have these two values 8.1 for you for yield stress so this yield stress matches with 8.1 for you and then ultimate stress is 13.24 so ultimate stress matches with 13.24 percentage reduction in area that is change in cross section area of steel rod to the original cross section area of steel rod so here the original cross section area that is when the diameter is 
25 mm square so we have 490.62 mm square to the final cross section area that is 176.625 divided by original cross section area so we get the value of 0.639 so when we multiply 0.639 into 100 we get 63.99 percentage so percentage reduction in area is 63.99 percentage so that means that matches with here and then percentage reduction in length that is change in length of steel rod to the original length of steel rod so we have final length 95 mm original length 70 mm to the original length so that gives 0 0.357 that's equal to 35.71 percentage so we have percentage elongation as 35.71 so this is the answer for this question The ratio of ultimate stress to the allowable stress is known as factor of safety, elastic limit, strain and bulk modulus. So we know that elastic limit when stress is directly proportional to strain is the elastic limit whereas strain change in length to the original length and then bulk modulus we have bulk stress upon bulk strain that is force upon area we are applying certain force so force upon area that is bulk stress and bulk strain change in volume to the original volume so here when we apply the force the change of volume takes place so that change in volume upon original volume so that becomes delta phi upon delta phi upon phi so here negative sign is due to the volume is going to decreasing because the force applied is compressive in nature so we have negative sign so we have bulk bulk modulus is equal to bulk stress upon bulk strain coming to factor of safety factor of safety is the ratio of ultimate stress rho ultimate stress to the allowable stress ultimate stress to the allowable stress is known as factor of safety and therefore as per the question the ratio of ultimate stress to the allowable stress is known as factor of safety option a is correct option The cotter is in warm thickness but tapered in width. The taper ratio is 1 is to 40, 1 is to 24, 1 is to 15, 1 is to 30. So when we see the cotter joint, this portion is called as cotter which is in 4 minutes thickness the thickness is in form throughout the length but it is taper on its width the width here is bigger and width at the end is 
smaller that is it is informally taper the taper ratio is 1 is to 24 that is the standard the taper provided usually of the ratio of 1 is to 24 this allows easy removal of the quarter from the joint the taper also provides the wedge action and results the tightening the joint so taper provides the wedge action so it will provide the tightening of the joint i want to also highlight the parts of quarter joint so this totally when we assemble it it will become quarter joint and here the male part is known as spigot and the female part is known as socket so we have socket collar and slot of the quarter so where we insert the quarter in this slot and we have rod and spigot collar quarter made of tapered for ease to remove and dismantle the joint is it true or false we have to answer so the taper will provide the wedge action to the quarter and makes it fit firmly and prevents the losing of the parts by ensuring tightness the taper will also make it easy to remove and dismantle the joint so as per the question taper is for easy to remove and dismantle of the joint so therefore this statement is true statement